When we pray, there's a God who heals us. Yeah. When we pray, there's a God to answer. Yeah. When we pray, we prevail, we prosper. Romans 4 17 very good please let's do it together so that we can all integrate the word of God into our souls can we do that one to go we call Abraham father not because he got God's attention by living like a saint but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody isn't that what we've all read in scripture? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as father of many peoples. Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do raise the dead to life with a word make something out of nothing verse 18 please let's do it together one to go when everything was hopeless abraham believed anyway decided not to leave not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do but on what god said he will do and so he was made father of multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. Verse 19, everyone. Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say it is hopeless. This hundred year old body could never father a child nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. Verse 20, he didn't tiptoe around God's promises asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God. Verse 21, sure that God will make good what he had said. That's why it said Abraham was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. Father, we ask for the blessing on your word. So much debt here today. God Almighty, help us today. Let someone's life be changed. Let this year be the best someone has ever had yet. In Jesus' name. First service, I, I must be frank with you. I, I, I don't know what to touch and what not to touch. I'll just touch a little that I can and be out. And I think give the rest over to the first, second service. Be seated. So I, I want to speak to you on how faith works. How faith works. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what that tells you is that the only way to please God is on the platform of faith. The absence of faith makes it impossible for God to be pleased by you. If you pray without faith, it doesn't please God. If you serve without faith, it doesn't please God. If you sing without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you give without faith, it is impossible to please God. Everything we do, if it has to be acceptable to God, must be on the platform of faith. 
There are two kinds of individuals in the house of God. At least two kinds. Those driven by faith and those driven by fear. Those who serve by faith and those who serve by fear because I'm afraid God may kill me if I don't serve. There are those who give by faith and those who give out of fear. There are those who love by faith and those who love out of fear. It is important for you to note that those who are driven by fear never start anything or continue or finish anything significant in life. Those whose lives are driven by fear, they usually don't start significant things. They usually don't con uh, sustain, continue significant things. That most of the times, they don't finish or build conclusively things that are very significant. These are the individuals who don't try again after a bad experience. Those who are driven by fear, they don't rise again after a fall. They don't try again after a betrayal. They don't try again after an investment goes wrong because they are driven by fear. They don't fall in love again because they are driven by fear. A bad past influences their lives. These are individuals who quit when the going gets tough they are the individual who, the moment they begin to feel that a situation is going to have an unfavorable end rather than end with such an end they quit before they see such an end they will leave a marriage in a hurry they will leave a ministry in a hurry one of my pastors yesterday uh, a man i respect is in another center uh, he was with me yesterday and we're just talking about what God is doing around us in the church here and he said Papa he said it's amazing how God is just making everything fall in place for the transforming church he said there are people that initially have made conclusions that maybe these people will not amount to anything I said well I said the lesson to learn in life is that nobody holds another person's destiny in your hands it is dangerous to write off anybody. It is dangerous to look at a church based on the things happening there. You go around and be like, oh no, they will never do this. And right before your face, God begins to blow all of your leads and conclusions and imaginations and assumptions. I always say this. If it is of man, it will not stand. But by now, somebody should know with what this church has been able to overcome that this is of God. And eyes have not yet seen. Ears have not yet heard. What God is truly about to do with us as a church. The glory that is lying ahead of us is simply mind blowing. Pastor, let me just share this with you to encourage you. We were thinking of going to Zambia next year. I mean last year. But we're like, God, we have not gotten people that we're going to be able to use to get to Zambia. Only for me to meet a lady in London, in our London church. And she called me, she said, Reverend, she says, Zambia needs to hear your voice. I said, I mean, we'll lie. I said, we need to go there. She said, TTC needs to be in Zambia. I said, we'd like to take TTC there. I said, but the issue is how do we get there? Pastor, she didn't talk to me. She don't give me a phone call. I said, sorry, I need to talk to you, Papa. Papa I've settled everything. He said, the father of faith in Zambia, the most respected man of God in Zambia, has said he has watched you. I sent him your link. He has watched you with his wife. He said, they're a very serious couple in the Lord. He said, they've watched your program. They've been in government and they're in ministry now. He said, they've watched your program and God spoke to them that they should open the door of Zambia to you. So we go to Zambia in September. Whilst we were speaking, I got a phone call from Congo. And, and, and you know, what's the name of this Grace? Grace? Huh? Gross Lokwa, something like that. This, and, and then guess what? I saw a message that he sent to our PP, our PP tribe number. 
and he said guess who we are discussing in the office of the most respected man of god in congo he said we're discussing reverend sam that the man of god is asking through the person who is the uh, ambassador or whatever to nigeria from congo and as i get ready sir because arrangements have been made to bring you over to congo no not our own contribution nothing I was speaking with the regional manager or something for the whole of MTN South Africa, who is some PP tribe. I said, ma'am, I need to bring some of you together in South Africa so that we can start planning towards our coming to South Africa. I just told her, I said, I want to bring a team together. I said, I would love, if, I would love it if you want to be part of the team. I said, some of the people in your team include the policy maker for the whole of South Africa in the area of health and the rest of that. We have some very powerful people in South Africa. I said, I'll bring all of you together so that we can work out our coming to South Africa. The next thing I got was a message. Say, Reverend Sam, please would like you to confirm the dates to us. Already a church that can sit twice the number of the hall you had before. The church has accepted they are going to host you. They are going to host the conference. And not only that, sir, we are also going to have the conference in Soweto. to all the pastors. They have agreed that as soon as you come, that they are willing to come together. That we have gotten the multi-purpose hall. I'm like, and I said to her, I said, Ma, I'm supposed to bring a team for this. She says, sir, don't worry. She said, the Lord put it on my heart number two she says sir give me the day tell me the time you want to come she said i'll take care of the flight and everything i'm talking to you about the season we are in trinidad and tobago just one woman and another woman and few women came together and as i speak with you everything that has to do with flight accommodation hotel how much they are spent i can't explain but the bottom line right now is that we're going to trinidad and we're spending nothing That's the season we are in. I am excited for the next generation in this church. And that's why I told the generation that is rounding up their own assignment in the next few years. I said to them, can we make life easier for the next generation? By making sure that the pastors who are doing the work now, do it with integrity. So that when you say I'm from TTC, they know your church with integrity. A good name is better than silver or gold. My goodness. Those driven by fear, they make decisions in anticipation of unfavorable outcome. Once your life is driven by fear, you make wrong decisions. You betray your friends. Most times people that betray their friends are people whose lives are driven by fear. Nobody can trust you. Nobody can rely on you. The moment you sense danger, you're about to lose an opportunity. You're about to lose privilege. You're about to lose connection. You wouldn't mind betraying a friend. Those who are driven by fear, they hide their potentials. Rather than serve with your potential, you keep your potential because you're afraid of pain. You are afraid of being hurt. I've been hurt before. I don't want to be hurt again. As a result of that, I keep my potential. I don't stretch out. I don't take steps. I don't step out. What if I fail? What if I make mistakes? What if it doesn't work out? What if I knock and they reject me? People with fear never make significant attempts. But those who those who are driven by faith they hear god they fear nothing they overcome doubt they obey god they hold on to the end they dare the impossible they try things that others usually will shrink at because they are driven by faith faith is absolute confidence write this down faith is absolute confidence in the person of god the faithfulness of God and the power of God. Faith is absolute confidence in the person of God, in the faithfulness of God and in the ability or the power of our God. Faith is seeing the invisible. Faith is seeing 
the invisible, believing the incredible and receiving the impossible. That's what faith is all about. Faith makes you to see the invisible. Faith makes you to believe the incredible. Faith makes you to receive the impossible. It is a nature and the DNA of faith. That's how it works. How does faith work? Please, number one, because of our time. I hope I can just... Huh. Number one, how does faith work? Please write this down. Faith names it. The way faith works, faith names it to become it. I know you've all been used to teaching some faith, but you're about to be exposed to something on faith that will help you. How does faith work? Number one, faith names a thing before it becomes the thing. Faith names it before it becomes it. How do I know? Romans chapter 4 in verse 17. The message translation. First, Abraham was first named father highlights that abraham was first person e first name him father please look at what follows there he was first named father and then became a father did you just get that now come on talk to me ttc transformers did you just get that what do we do first we name it so that it can become it. Please, if you're going nowhere after this, this will be a transformative message. It will revolu revolutionize your faith concept. It will begin to make you see results. This, listen, I'm not teaching you anything different from what I've done. This is what I have done, daddy, for years. Am I correct, sir? Is that not what you've noticed, madam? All of you. Pastor Shaku stood outside today. And he said, Papa, you said the location, you were there. Pastor Shaku said, Sir, you said that the location of our church will be accessible to by what, sir? Say it again. You can hear them saying it. Because I announced it. Did I know that our church will be by a major N16 highway? I said that 22 years ago. I said we would travel all the nations of the earth. Oh, say it again. Oh, you heard me say it. What am I announcing to you now? Nations paying. Number three, I said we will not be going on the invitation of individuals. But on the invitation of what? Oh, you are saying it. Let me ask you a question. Which one have you said? That's a problem. Faith names it so it can become it. So Abraham was first named Pater, father. In order for Abraham to become father. <laughs> I will open your eyes to mysteries in God's word. I will show you why your life, your life is not yet becoming what you have as a desire. The missing link between your desire and the realities that you desire is the absence of sound. Pastor Promise, where do you want to see yourself? Which countries? Say it. Say it. He named it before it became it. Dubai understands this. And they are applying this principle. Dubai said, we will be a center of attraction for the nations of the earth. That nobody will be able to ignore us. As it becomes so, sir. Jackson Hayne at the airport. Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. When I got to the airport, sir, man of God, 
I'm like, what a big airport. And I said, when did they build this airport? They said they built it in the 70s. And I asked them a question. I said, ah, but did you have traffic? They said, no. They said, we were building it because if we build it, they will come. you are a soundless person that's why you are a resultless person a soundless life is a resultless life the God kind of faith is the faith that speaks the faith of God is the faith that speaks he called those things that be not what are you calling? What are you saying? What are you naming? Whatever Adam called them, that was what they became. I can see somebody already talking. Or somebody is already talking. I said it for seven years. Seven solid years. I'll say, I see my daughter. I see my daughter. Nothing happening in the womb of my wife. I say, I see my daughter. And I see my daughter. I am seeing my daughter. Not only am I seeing her, I'm beholding her. And I'm holding her. The word has become flesh. How does faith work? Faith names it to become it. It is by this operation of faith that will make something out of nothing. <laughs> That's why he said he made something out of Abraham when he was nothing. Name your children so they can become it. You call your son, you are a leader. Wherever you go, you will lead your, your organization. You will lead others. My daughter, come. You're a wise one. What, what do you call the person? Hello, sir. Look up. I'm not going to be teaching you a long, long story. C can you vary the sound? You just keep it on one monotone. Just... Now, listen carefully to me. Years ago, when we got married, pastor, because I always like witnesses, did you remember when I would stand on the altar and I will say she will do me no evil say it again oh you've heard me say that I will say that about my wife so I didn't start I started 22 years ago I will look at my wife and I will tell her brother I say she will do me no evil all the days of my life she will do me no evil all the days of my life she will do me no evil How does faith, how does faith work? The Bible says, first, he named him Abraham and then became, he named him father. First, name it. And then he became it. He named him to become it. What name have you given your company? The fastest growing tech company in this country. Globally speaking. What are you calling your product? The fastest selling product in Africa. Name it. Hello sir. Don't allow the presence of mediocres regulate your expression. Mediocres are always unsettled by the words of greatness. When you speak greatness, mediocres will be revealed. Everybody is not your true friend. It is when you begin to speak greatness that you begin to see that most of the people around you are only people that can contain you as a small person but can't handle you as a bigger version of yourself. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh my goodness. My time is gone. How does faith work? <laughs> I'll leave you with this in two minutes. Faith overrules physical reality 
by spiritual realities. Faith overrules physical reality by spiritual reality. Faith does not deny realities. It overrules them. That's why in the report of Abraham, the Bible says his body now dead. That's the reality. So please, it is foolishness for you not to go for medical check. Go for your medical check. It is not a bad thing for the doctors to tell you that they saw that there's mosquito parasite in your body. That's okay. It's what they saw. It's a reality. It's not a bad thing for them to say, oh, they saw a typhoid in your body. No, it's not a bad thing. That's a physical reality. That's a medical reality. What we do with medical realities and physical reality is that we superimpose spiritual realities on them until spiritual realities swallows up. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? For death is swallowed up. It's called the law superimposition. When a higher thing comes on the smaller thing, it swallows it. Jesus did not deny the fact that Lazarus was dead. He just didn't call him dead. He said, my brother is, our brother is asleep. He said, let's go with supernatural reality to wake him up. To do what, sir? Why didn't he admit that he was dead? The admittance of death is the finality of the situation. If Jesus had said Lazarus was dead, Lazarus would have never come back to life. Ministers of God, servants of God, believers, be careful, be careful what you say about a thing before you pray about the thing. You were going to pray for somebody that died. And you were hoping the person would come back. And then you were on your way. A phone rang. And I said, sorry, please, I'm on my way to uh, Mr. Nan's Kapataya house. And said, what's going on there? He said, no, he just died. So what are you going there to do? Now I'm going to pray so that I can do what? You have just confirmed this death. Have you noticed the woman with the, the, the Shunammite woman? When her son died, she never used her mouth to say, my son, never. She says, I come home, it is well. Because she knew the moment she says it is, he is dead, you can't call him back to life. That's why your marriage is going down. Because you've used your mouth to say this marriage will not work. It's better we go our separate ways. You killed that marriage on the day you spoke like that. Please, on the 23rd of this month, God is calling a solemn assembly. It's going to be a day I want to speak on becoming a power couple. Breaking barriers in areas of communication, sexual intimacy, and everything that has to do with working as a team to build your finances. The adversary of most couples are themselves. No devil is at work against your marriage than yourselves. Sometimes ask yourself, why are we against each other like this? Did we marry each other to kill each other? When we we're going to the altar, did we vow we will kill each other in the future? When did we become each other's enemies so bad that we don't like to see each other? That being apart has become our major comfort than being together. And money has made it possible now because affordability has increased the space between us. You have your money, I have my money. I can go to the hotel if you stress me too. You know, you stress me, I leave you. Please, make sure you register for that today. Today, at the information desk couples because we're closing the registration on Wednesday. We want to know the regulated number of people we're having so that we can close the registration on Wednesday. Let me leave you with this. The Bible says
Bible said when everything, verse 18, when everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw couldn't, he couldn't do, but on what God said he will do. So look at Abraham here. He said, he, he noticed that this body is dead. It's hopeless. He said, but he decided that he will not leave based on what he knew he couldn't do. Maybe I should break it down for couples. You know that your body is dead as a man. Then I say, Sarah, Sarah, tonight, see me. For what, sir? So yesterday it was dead. Sarah, see me tonight. The Bible says he did not leave based on what he couldn't do. Are you hearing me? Shake it while in Can I come and help you? You are not hearing me, sir. He couldn't leave, sir. He did not leave. He decided from today, I will not leave based on what I can't do. I will leave based on what God says I can do. Elako parataya. Am I talking to somebody here? Can I break it down? I will not make decision based on my bank account. No, 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 sir. I will make my decision based on our God who is able to provide all things according to his riches in glory by who, sir? I'm going for my PhD. Where? We have nobody in my family has ever gone. Who is going to fund it? I don't know. How will you get there? I don't know. But what I can tell you is that I serve a God who will make a way. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? Start the project. Where will the money come from? I don't know. But one thing I can tell you is if I start, there is a God who will make a way. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God here? Somebody shout a yes in the house of God. How are you going to build it? I don't know. But there's something I know. I know that God who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all you can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Somebody shout amen in the house of I can't ride on. Ah. Wish I can tell you more. But, but this is this is how does faith work? Faith superimposes spiritual reality on physical reality. Remain stand as I talk with you, as I pray for you. So here, here's again. Faith chooses to do what God says to do, not minding what man says you shouldn't do. Faith chooses to do what God says you should do, not minding what man says you can't do. Sir, same yesterday, Pastor Johnson said, Daddy, Pastor, he said, do you remember that somebody, an elder man, elderly man we went to meet when we were to start the building of this project? He said, did you remember that the elderly man told us to gather wood together and build bacha? The man asked me a question. He said, son, he said, how many people in your planning team have ever built a house? I said, nobody, sir. At that period, Pastor and maybe Pastor Johnson were the most progressive. He had built a boy's quarter. Pastor Johnson had built somewhere in the bush. The rest of the people in my team, nobody had ever built anything. All tenants. He said, you see what I'm telling you? He said, you people want to build. But I, I knew I had God. I knew, sir, that I had God. He said, this is your last time of staying in a wine house. Did I not mention it that to you, sir? God said, build. When I left him, the Lord said, this will be the last day you will ever go and see him again. I said, so Lord, how do we build? I was in the bathroom. As, as I came into the bathroom, I just had the voice clearly. He said, raise no fund, preach on no money. Call no church member on money. Bring no preacher to raise money. I will build my house. Immediately I heard it. I said, am I talking to myself? Where, where is this one? I called Apostle Goodart of Roger today. He was pastor of us on the rock. 
I said, Daddy, I'm hearing a strange voice. He said, what is it? He said, I said, the Lord said, we should start our building. No fundraising. No preaching of money. No calling any church member who is rich for anything. And the Lord said he will build it. No bringing of preacher. And we stepped out by faith. I called Pastor Isaiah, the chairman of the building committee. And Pastor Isaiah looked at me and he said, sir. He says, sir, you made me chairman. You didn't give me money. Now you say I shouldn't call anybody. How will we build? That was when the scripture came alive. Give us this day our daily bread. I told them, I said, don't worry about what we are trying to build. What do we need for tomorrow? We'll pray about it. Father, the only prayer we kept praying, Father, give us tomorrow our daily bread. What we need for tomorrow. There was never a time, sir, from the start of this project, where we are getting to a phase where we needed anything for that phase and we lacked. Before we get to that phase, it's already on ground. Church members, no. Church members, all of you, most of you that were here then, you were worshipping at the car park under a roofing sheet. And you were watching the church build. Millionaires in church were watching church being built. I will share more. But I've told you this today. To let you know that if God told you to do it, please go for it. You can achieve it. You can become it. You can make it. You can build it. You can attain it. You can have it. You can reach it. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. On February 9th, I had an asthma attack. I have been having issues with my lungs and I had to rush to the, um, the doctor's office to get oxygen. The doctor said I was having a asthma exasperation. When I went home, I was there and I was praying and all of that and I hear a voice saying, go back and watch Reverend Sam Oye video he did for praying on your lungs and I went back and I'm searching and searching and searching for the video but I couldn't find it so I found a video which was nine days before and when I found that video I started to play it in the midst of me playing back that prayer and as soon as Reverend Sam Oye started to pray my lungs started to clear up my voice which was gone i was you know i was so trying to breathe you know so trying to breathe and my voice came back my lungs cleared up i am normal right now <laughs> all praises to the most high i was obedient to the voice the voice said go back and listen to a video that was played probably 10 days or nine days before and i went back and i got elin I got healing with our God all things are possible all things are possible I thank Reverend Sam Oye and the prophetic prayer hour trust me this has been a blessing to me my mentor Reverend Sam Oye I thank you for everything you're doing for me and everybody across the world thank you for watching we hope you were blessed and richly transformed by this sermon. Join us on site and online in any of our centers globally as displayed on the screen. When we pray, there's a God who heals us. Yeah. When we pray, there's a God to answer. Yeah. When we pray, we prevail, we prosper. Follow us on all social media handles as shown on the screen. For more inquiries, visit www.thetransformingchurch.org 
Also, don't forget to join Prophetic Prayer Hour with Reverend Sam Oye. I want to specially use this opportunity to invite you and your family members to join us every day, Monday to Friday, as we come together with thousands from across the nations of the earth. In actual fact, we are in over 110 countries from where people connect with us every day just to be blessed by this ministry. You want to be a part of it. And you want to be a part of all the testimonies that we've been enjoying since we began this program. We know our God to be the God with whom all things are possible. We know that if there is a man and a woman to pray, there is always a God who answers our prayer. So I invite you and your family members. Do you want revival in your spirit man? Do you want healing for your body, breakthroughs in your career and business finances? Do you want to see a turnaround in your life? Join us Monday to Friday as we experience God on all the platforms that are shown right on your screen now. God of heaven, continue to watch over you in Jesus' mighty name.